We cannot continue to live in the Middle Ages. The era of feudalism has passed. There are improvements such as trucks, phone or electric light that are basic for development. Things have changed and we must adapt accordingly. We have no other choice. It is indeed nice, the image of the camel caravans walking along the dunes, but the trucks carry seven times more load and five times faster. Caravans must continue to exist. There are thousands of families, my own among them, that depend on these animals, but it is necessary to find new alternatives. A few years ago, a law was established that regulated the transportation of salt, which could only be made by camels and not in trucks. Those are laws to protect the Azalai's permanence, but for how long could the caravan be protected if compared with the truck? The elder must work together with the young people to find these new alternatives. That would be a good thing. I have lived in Agadez for two years with my uncle Kane, my mother's eldest brother. Due to war problems, the Timia school was closed and so it was decided that I would live with my uncle and my aunt. My uncle Kane is a blacksmith. He left the village many years ago and came to town to earn his living. He rarely returns to the village. Mohamed El Hadji is Hassan's father. He lives in Timia, and during the war, he worked as an informant for the rebel groups who were fighting against the government. He was officially working with an NGO to help the refugees, and from that position he provided details about the movements made by the regular Niger troops around the area. His family has always worked on the Azalai. And this year, for the first time in a long time, he will see his caravan depart in a quiet atmosphere. At last, an air of peace can be breathed at the village. Long ago, handicraft work was not made directly by the Tuaregs, but by slaves who stayed at stable camps. The blacksmiths, although more highly esteemed, were part of this group. A nobleman, would never marry a craftswoman. All these habits have changed with time, and nowadays, the relationships among the races are more flexible, and also marriages with members of other ethnic groups are more common. Silver crosses are the most highly prized jewelry among all the work made by the Tuareg craftsmen. There is a different cross design for each city. Timbuktu and Agadez have theirs, and also Timia. It's used for protection, and also as a currency of exchange. In the drought season, these are exchanged for camels, cloth, or food. To make these crosses, they use the beeswax melting technique. The beeswax is heated, shaped by hand, and the mold is covered with donkey dung. Once the wax is melted, they pour molten silver in it. At the end of this process is when you will verify the good skills of the craftsmen in the detail of the drawings that complete the cross. It has been several months since I've seen my parents. At the beginning, I felt very sad when they told me that I must leave Timia and go to Agadez to study. All my friends were in the village, and I never thought about leaving. Now I feel very happy to see these mountains again.
Timia is a little village in the heart of the air, in northern Niger. The air is one of the massifs that delimits the Sahara Desert. Since time immemorial, and during the last few years of the most recent rebellion, this steep territory has served as refuge for the Tuareg tribes. Timia is, above all, the starting point for the salt caravans that go in and out of the air mountains. There are two routes, one in the north, departing from Timia, and another one in the plains, departing from Magadez. Both meet in the Tenede wells, and then follow the same route to the salt mines. I dream about going back and joining my father at the caravan. When I lived in the village, I remembered that by then, everybody was excited about the preparations for the trip. For weeks, everybody did nothing but talk about the caravan, the stages, about places where water could be found, and also about the fear of being attacked by the army soldiers. A great celebration was organized before departure. Now, I'm coming back to enjoy all that for the first time. Furthermore, there's Ibrahim. Now he's my family in Agadez. He will also go this year with the caravan for the first time. I've not seen him for two days, and I already miss him. If we're lucky, our caravans will join at the wells of Tenere. All of his family have come to welcome him. His father, his mother, and his uncle Gumar, one of his father's brothers who emigrated to Libya during the conflict and who has also returned to join the caravan. Libya backed the Tuaregs, and many left to receive military training there. Gumar was one of them. <laughs> The rebellion was not for nothing. It occurred due to specific reasons. People had no rights. I do not think Tamashek could become an independent country, but indeed I expect it could be possible for our people to regularly enter the public office's jobs. Now, for instance, the Mayores of Agadez is a Tamashek. At those places where rebellion was hard, you could find some Tamashek leading people. My idea is to stay here and work in agriculture. I will try to get some piece of land to dig a well and live off that. Now that we're at peace, I think this land will improve in some years. You cannot imagine the results you can obtain from this land if you really work on it. We're in the middle of the desert, of the mountain, and in spite of that we get corn, oranges and onions. We are self-sufficient and our next objective is to get the road improved, to be able to transport the surplus to Agadez market. The Tamashek have always been aggressive people, and the generations to come will have the opportunity to decide their own destiny. What really counts is peace. If we have peace, there will be a future. In Agadez, Ibrahim and his father have already started the preparations for the imminent departure of the caravan. The market is the point where the journey begins and ends. There the people show the shipment of salt they bring on their return. Just one camel can transport up to 200 kilograms of salt. In Timir, they are preparing the bula, a paste made of dates, millet, and crushed dry cheese, which will be the men's food when they're in the desert. Bula is a high-energy food, 
that together with tea is the essential diet for the camel drivers. Over the next few days, they will have a long way to walk, and there is no time to cook. The meals are frugal and fast. Only tea is had in different ways.